on the march. The world over, men are on the march. And now in Mexico, too, proudly taking her place among the nations at war with the Axis. Looking on is President Manuel Avila Camacho, who called on his countrymen to preserve the honor of the fatherland. Officers from the United States, this day in Mexico City, salute the Mexican flag with a right goodwill. Yes, the people of Mexico, 19 and a half million strong, have joined the ranks of the United Nations. Fine roads, part of the great Pan-American system. Important as they are to commerce, to defense, the great thing is that these roads, well paved, well policed, are taking thousands of average United States folks into the heart of a neighboring country. Now that good roads run way down south of the border, we Americans are more numerous, more truly representative of the United States, and down the road a bit is this. It's the town of Tasco, where modern Mexico keeps the look of old-time Mexico. Tasco was founded by Borda, the Frenchman who two centuries ago made himself rich from Tasco silver. Borda is dead, but the silver is still going strong. Mexico, all by herself, gives the world one-third of all its silver. And one mine has been worked since before the days of Montezuma over 400 years ago. Many and many are the hands that have been busy working on silver in Tasco all through the years. They say the stars are brighter in Tasco than in most places. Anyway, Tasco silver is bright and full of a sort of south-of-the-border glamour. Care for statistics? No? Well, here they are anyway. Mexico has 13 big commercial air bases beside this one at Mexico City. There are 23 air routes, three of them coming down from the United States. You can fly here in one day from Los Angeles. About three million miles are flown each year by about 70,000 passengers. Not all of them as attractive as Mapi Cortez, from Puerto Rico, star of Mexican movies and highly popular singer. Where Mapi works her entertaining spell, Mexico City's swankiest hotel. Let's go in and listen to her. And now, Mapi Cortez. Cantinflas. Do you know him? If not, it's high time you did. Let's hope he's in. Ahí está Cantinflas. Yes, there he is. The number one man in Mexico's popular theater and also a film star of the first magnitude. What Chaplin is to us, Cantinflas is to Mexico. That thing around his shoulders, that voluminous gabardine, that's his coat. What he calls his coat, anyhow. Canteen Plus was a law student before the stage captured him. As a lawyer, you would have had to talk sense once in a while. 
As it is, he's well paid for never making any sense at all. His Mexican double talk, which he pours out in a mad, relentless dribble, is one of the funniest things in the world. And by the way, on his days off, he's an amateur bullfighter. His right name is Mario Moreno. But to all Mexicans, he's just Canteen Plus and the maddest rascal going. On another part of the studio lot, the trio Misteco. General Maximino Avila Camacho, the president's brother, member of the cabinet, powerful and exuberant figure in the national life, and the most colorful of the charos. And who are the charros? Why the Plaza de los Charros, which is the pride of many a Mexican city and town? The answer reaches back to the days of the Spanish conquest, when horses were cherished and horsemanship was a cult, and on to the later days of the great ranches, when the owner prided himself on being as good a horseman as any of his hands. And then on down to today, when the charros are splendidly mounted, magnificently costumed members of a society in which the horse is still cherished as the central fact in a richly romantic tradition. So their tests of riding skill and this sport with the bulls, which is called la coleada, are more than mere stunts. They're a sort of ritual. And now a page from history, pageantry which reconstructs the sacrificial rites of those ancient dwellers in Mexico, the Aztecs. the youth who is to be sacrificed at high noon to the sun god, the handsomest of the war prisoners. The victim performs his ceremonial dance, which is one of exaltation, for he is about to go to his death gladly. It was high honor to be chosen messenger of the sun. Priests, princes, and warriors share in the procession and oblations. This opulent pageant, staged for the delegates of the Inter-American Travel Congress, is as careful a reenactment of the ancient ceremonies as could be achieved. The Temple of the Sun is impressively reproduced, and all the details of the festival are as historically accurate as research could make them. This is undoubtedly how the ancient inhabitants of Mexico looked and acted on one of their holiest festive days. Now the messenger of the sun has had his moment of glory, has delivered the staff and shield which the sun god will need in his never-ending journey through the heavens, and has had the supreme honor of offering up his life. The voladores suspended from the high mast before the temple launch themselves into space. Youths and maidens dance, and everyone is happy, including the handsome and so recently alive messenger of the sun the festival comes to an end. Thus does Mexico of today keep alive the memory of her ancient past.